Hey, what's up, guys? I just want to talk a little bit today about angels and uh, how God commissions angels to help people. And uh, if you don't know it, you actually have had an angel uh, with you for all of your life. And God sends angels to and fro from heaven. He brings them down for assignments. He has different types of angels, and he will allow these angels to do different things, different works and different, um, you know, uh, send messages or tasks and, and whatnot to help you. And these angels are obviously very powerful. And you know, a lot of us walk, if, especially if you're a Christian, I mean, you're probably aware that there's you no know, spiritual battle and, you know, there's angels and demons and you have all this that's probably going on that you don't really see. And you might attribute certain things, certain, you know, difficulties or um, spiritual battles. And you say, oh, that's there's something going on behind the scenes. But we don't really take that as seriously as we ought to in the sense of how that applies to us on a day to day basis. And more recently, I've just been really uh, reminded of that and really praying to the Lord to help me uh, with whatever it is that I need and very specifically to uh, to help uh, send the angels to commission the angels, because a lot of these angels they just sit there and they'll, they'll wait for the Lord to to commission them. So these angels don't really, you know, just do something just out of their own will. And obviously if they're, you know, tasked to do something, you know, broad, like protect you or whatever it is, then, you know, they, they act on their own. But oftentimes you have to pray to the Lord for these angels to come and minister to you, to help you or um, assist you in, in, in fights and in battles and whatever it is that you're going on that's going on in your life right and so i just want to talk a little bit about that because many of us often go into battle we go into whatever it is that we're tasked to do for that day for a particular assignment for a ministry and we don't really bring with us the full capability and the powers of the angelic um you know assignments that they're given and so there's so many different ways you can do that but as part of that your prayer it helps with that. And as much as when you pray, you have the Holy Spirit help you, you have, you know, um, different circumstances kind of come into play. But oftentimes when things um, happen behind the scenes or when, when something supernatural happens, those are angels that are helping uh, do those things. And I want to just share one particular story that I had recently where I believe an angel had come to really help me with something. And so you know, as I mentioned, I'm praying more and more if I if I can and remember how an angelic being can be commissioned to help assist you in certain things, right? And one of the things that I pray, and I didn't even know that this was an angelic help, but I, in hindsight, I do believe it was an angelic help that had assisted me with this. But essentially, um, it, it's a small thing, but I think it was big because of how um, I, I essentially work and, and my habits throughout the day. But there was one particular evening where I went to bed and I was just praying, Lord, I'm so tired. I pray that you would just give me good rest. I haven't been sleeping much this week. It's been a lot of work. And I just pray that you would just give me good rest, even with the small amount of hours that I have remaining this very evening. And it was a Thursday night and I was going to bed Thursday night, having exhausted myself from the entire week. And this is like a month ago or, or maybe a month or two ago. I was going to bed that night. And normally my morning routine would be just to get up right away and I'll pray um, and I'll read the word or I'll journal a little bit or whatever it is or, or um, uh, yeah, just kind of meditate on the Lord. Uh, mainly it's in prayer um, and I'll do that and that's my quiet time, my devotional. And then oftentimes I'll go uh, work out if I w wake up early enough and then I'll get right to work. But normally work starts at 8.30 for me. So meaning that we always have a meeting like a morning meeting every day at 8.30. And that has not changed for the longest time. And some days uh, I could count it just maybe a couple times like throughout the year. Last year, we had that meeting pushed half an hour. And so uh, I've never been late, never ever been late to a meeting or I never missed a meeting. I've been late a few times, um, just connection issues or uh, to be honest, I, I may uh, get up a little bit later um, and I push things and I've lost track of time or whatever it is. Uh, but I've never missed a meeting, right, and for the longest time. So <clears throat> for that, I just think, okay, I obviously have to be responsible and accountable to work and, and all that. And so I wake up, well, I go to bed that evening, I wake up, and I feel very rested, right? But I wake up, and I don't remember hearing my alarm, but I wake up just fully, like, 
um, I don't know, like gasping awake, like, <gasps> like, oh, wait, it's like, it's the morning. I didn't hear my alarm. I look at my clock and it's 8.50 and I'm like, oh man, it's 8.50. I just totally missed my entire 8.30 meeting. And so I go uh, right to my computer and I thought, oh man, some people are going to message me and they're going to say, hey, where were you? Um, I didn't get any of those messages. And then I thought, okay, maybe there's some uh, connectivity issues. I try to sign on. Um, and th- that was like the first day that I just panicked awake and just went right to work and just thought, okay, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, I'm in trouble, right? And so I go on my computer and I realize that uh, the, our meeting was pushed to 9 a.m. And this was like the first time in the longest time that this meeting was pushed to 9 a.m. And I normally find out like the night before, right? And so I, I just sit there like for five minutes just repenting. Um, before I find this out, I'm, I'm sitting there, Lord, I've never missed a meeting. I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm repenting, repenting. I'm so irresponsible, blah, blah, blah. And then as I log in, no one messaged me. I didn't see anything. And I it was 8.55. And then I realized the meeting is at 9. And so I'm like, oh, my goodness. So I log in. And obviously, all is fine. But it, I, I just couldn't help but think, man, how could I miss my alarm? How did I, you know, what like what happened? And then I just thought, man, the, the night before I prayed, Lord, would you give me good rest? And as I even awake, uh, um, was awake, maybe it was just the adrenaline rushing. Maybe it was actually a good night's rest. But as I woke up maybe an hour or, or more later than normal, I thought to myself, man, I think that I really believe that an angel of the Lord had come and either silenced my alarm, snoozed it, or just turned it off and allowed me to sleep up until he you know, poked me awake or whatever it is, because I literally just suddenly woke up at 8.50. And of course, I didn't know any of that in terms of push the, the meeting being pushed and all that. And so I really sat there and I just thought, oh, Lord, I really, that prayer was really answered, that you gave me rest and that you were, you were with me that entire time. And I attribute that uh, to the angel of the Lord being commissioned to help me. And so I, I just thought to myself, Lord, that was, uh, um, you know, like a very miraculous thing in some sense uh, of how you allowed that to work. And I'm just so thankful. And so, uh, though, you know, I'm, you know, constantly trying to examine and and repent and things like that. I thought, oh, Lord, that was just something that you had done for me out of your grace and your mercy and your love for me. And so I was just very thankful. But that just got me to think that in all circumstances, if you do pray and if you do recognize where it is that you need help and how you need to, you know, pray pray, for for the angels to be commissioned to help you that that would be an instance of that and so there's many examples there's many types of angels and there's many tasks that need to be done but it requires for you to actually ask the lord for that for uh the lord to really commission those angels to help you in your walk because if you were to fight demonic and you know spiritual things on your own you would be wasted you would literally be like you know, an ant compared to what spiritual forces are out there to, to, to battle this, this battle with. And so um, you have to be aware of that. And so as many of you and myself included, as we're trying to fight and as we're trying to uh, just be more aware of the spiritual battles around us, both mentally and inside of us and just even in our thoughts, uh, to everything else that happens on a day-to-day basis, we have to really be aware of that. And to really practice more of that, to be in prayer. And as you're praying to the Lord, praying in the spirit, you also pray for specific actions and tasks to be done. So it's very much like any, you know, war general, right? Any war commander, they have units and soldiers and different things that they need to commission and and tell and order and, and whatnot. And if you do that for the kingdom, if you do that for godly purposes, God would send those angels to help and he would send help He would allow, obviously, the Holy Spirit to be in you, to give you wisdom, to give you insight, to allow you to make choices. But he would also send help along the way. And so that's what this big battle, this spiritual life, and and just this whole walk is about, right? And so we need to be more aware of that. So I want to just encourage you guys with that because it's something that should be top of mind, but a lot of us forget it. We forget that we have an angel that's next to us all the time, covering us and watching over us. Um, and honestly, if that angel wasn't there, you could literally trip and you could, you know, snap your neck or whatever it is that the Lord is, by His grace, saving you from continually living and to just even being able to breathe every single day 
and, and have your heart beat. That's by the grace of God, right? And so that same goes for everything. I'm sure the angel goes, you know, right before me and just removes all these obstacles. And I just, I don't even know, right? And until we get to heaven, we don't even know what the angels have done so far to date to be able to have gotten us so far to where we are. And so I just want to remind you guys of that and just really um, uh, make sure that you're praying in, in that in that way. And so God bless you guys and uh, I'll talk to you guys very soon.